Jesus Christ wants to help you. But here are the reasons why Jesus may not be able to help you. My name is Olusia Gumokuolu. Let's pray as we look at the word of God. Dear Father in heaven, we ask this day that you will please give us understanding as you open forth your word unto us, such that, Lord, we might run a meaningful race and end up with you in eternity. Give my hearers understanding and a simple heart to accept your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, for those of you who may have looked at the title, Why Jesus Can't Help You, you may be wondering, why would anybody say Jesus can't help someone? Jesus wants to help everybody. But when you look at the life of some believers, it looks as if Jesus doesn't want to help them. They claim to have known Jesus for years, but you can't see any light in them. You can't see growth in them. You can't see evidence that this is a person who has come in contact with our Lord Jesus Christ. They hear testimony of the Lord speaking with people, of the Lord meeting people at their various needs, and they are wondering, how come they are not having this kind of experience? I want to share with you from the Word of God today, why you may not be having that kind of experience. Even though God wants to help you greatly, even though God has the resources and everything that is required to help you, why he may still not help you. If you have your Bible, can you please turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 19 and we will pick the reading from verse 16. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, I want you to know that this passage, this story, you can also find it in the book of Mark Ah, chapter 10. And in Mark chapter 10 verse 17, let me read it. It says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled down to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? I want you to see this picture. That somebody came to Jesus running. This person was not walking. This person was not sluggish in coming to Jesus. This person ran to Jesus. And then when he got to Jesus, he knelt down. He knelt down and asked him, good master. He acknowledged Jesus as master. So look at what this man had done. He ran to Jesus. That's the first thing. He ran to Jesus. He did not run to some uh, people that have no power. He ran to Jesus. He didn't run to a man. He ran to Jesus. Number two, he knelt down to Jesus, almost like worship. When an adult man is kneeling down for another man, you may think that is humility. You may think that is worship. This man knelt down to Jesus. Then thirdly, he acknowledged Jesus as master. That means that after you, there is no other master. After Jesus, there cannot be another master. This man acknowledged. Then he asked him a question. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Look at the fourth thing about this man. This man did not come to Jesus to ask for money. He didn't come to Jesus to ask for a wife or to ask for a husband. He didn't come to Jesus to ask for a wife. He was not seeking breakthrough. This man was not seeking visa. He wasn't seeking favor. He was asking probably the most important question that every living being on the face of the earth must ask, must ask God. That that should be a question that must be on any serious heart on the face of the earth. What? That is the question of eternal life. Where will you spend eternity? This man is not just so is not just concerned about the time that we live in. This man is concerned about eternity. He is thinking of eternity. Where will he spend eternity? Will he be in the lake of fire? Or will he be in the glorious presence of the Lord Jesus Christ? This was the question that was on the heart of this man. 
And he came to Jesus and asked him. So look at it again. He ran to Jesus. He knelt down to Jesus. He acknowledged the Lordship of Christ. And then he asked an important question. He did not ask a frivolous question. He asked an important question. Now, so far when you look at this man, you may begin to think that this is the kind of man that God is looking for. This is the kind of man that God is going to help. What else can you require from a man? Look at the response of Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is not good but one. That is God. Now the first thing you notice about the response of Jesus is that despite the fact that this man ran to Jesus, knelt down to Jesus, acknowledged Jesus and asked important questions, the next thing Jesus was going to, that will come out from the mouth of Jesus, was a rebuke. I thought Jesus would be like, what a lovely man. Oh, I love this man. This man is seeking me. This man is coming after me. But the next thing you will see was a rebuke. Why callest thou me good? Jesus doesn't flatter people. He was going to address one fundamental problem with this man. That it is not, there is none that is good but God. And it is only as God expresses himself in man that a man is good. Therefore, no man can be good independent of God. You see, if Jesus didn't correct this, the man believes in himself to be good. That is why he feels that he even has capacity. He thought he has the capacity to determine who is good and who is not good. Do we not see that today? That you think that you are good. You think that you even know somebody who is good. Have even had believers foolishly say that you see, this man, he's just so nice. He's just so good. He just need to add Jesus. Can you imagine? They are talking about an unbeliever. It's because you do not understand the state of a man. There is no man that is good outside of God. Remember that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the tree of death. For in the day you eat of it, you will die. So whether you go and take that the side of the good or you take the side of the evil, it is still death that will be the result of that tree once you eat from it. So Jesus had to correct this impression that you are not good. The reason why many people cannot see God in their life is that they think that they are good. I pray that God will open your eyes to see who you really are. You think that you are good. You think that you are sufficient. I've had believers say, but I have a good heart. Where will you get that good heart from? No human being has a good heart. Except God gives the heart. He says, I will give you a heart of the flesh. I will take the heart of stone from you. If you have not received that heart from Jesus, then you cannot be good. But many people think they are good in themselves. And they think that they can recognize somebody that is good. So Jesus addressed that very quickly. To let this man know that see, nobody is good. Now look at it. If Jesus is saying, he's not accepting that he himself is good. That it is only God that is good. How can you as a human being think that you are good? Or think that you know what it means to be good? That's how we think. We feel that we are good in ourselves. One of the greatest deliverance that can come to any man is for God to show you how miserable you are. It's for God to show you how terrible you are so that you can be delivered. Unfortunately, many believers are holding on to their own goodness. They feel that they are good. They feel that, well, they are doing what is right. So Jesus addressed this man. Then Jesus now addressed his question. He said, well, thou knowest the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud or honor, uh, do not defraud, honor thy father and thy mother. That is in verse 19. Now, but if I read it in Matthew, that is Mark 10 19. Let's now read the same account in Matthew 19 17. Look at what Jesus said Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. I pray this, this will enter into your spirit. That there is none that is good. You know, at times we want to even judge God. 
You look at the situation and say, no, no, no. If God is good, why is he doing this? You see, the reason why you are speaking like that is because somewhere in yourself, you think that you are good. You think you know what is good. And probably God is wicked. So he said, none <clears throat> is good but God. And Jesus added, but if that we enter into life, keep the commandments. It was the man that now said, he now said unto Jesus, which one? Which one? That was where we now have this response in Matthew 19, 18 and in Mark 10, 19. It says, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, this was what Jesus confronted this man with. Now, look at the response of this man in verse 20. In verse 20. And, you know, he said, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Do you know the interesting thing about scriptures? Did you know that Mark chapter 10 account, this response was also in verse 20. <laughs> I just read Matthew 19:20. The, the young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What like I yet? Then let me read Mark 10, 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Can you see? The, the response came in the same verse. Verse 20, verse 20 of different chapters of different books. Our God is also. So this man says, I've been keeping this. And he said this boldly before Jesus. And I want you to take note. I want you to really note something here. Now look at what Jesus said to the man. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. The man said, he said, what lack I yet? You see this man? He knows that despite the fact that he could keep all of these things, something was still missing. And Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect. Now, let me read that verse 21 in Mark. He says, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, Beholding him, loved him. If the Bible says that Jesus loved somebody, brethren, the rest are sure that Jesus loved that man. Now we want to see how Jesus is going to guide a man that he loved into eternal life. How Jesus is going to guide a man that he loved so much into eternity. And then Jesus now said unto him, said unto him, he said, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Look at the instruction in, in verse 21 of Mark. It says, Then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thou thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus had told his own disciple. He said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up the cross and follow me. Jesus didn't say, if any man want to be my disciple, let him keep the commandments. That's not what Jesus said. He didn't say, let him keep the Ten Commandments. This man was keeping the Ten Commandments. It is the denier of self. The taking up of the cross that can make a man to follow Jesus. Securing eternity is not about doing something. It's about following a person. The problem today is that many people want to do something but don't want to follow Jesus. Because to follow Jesus will, will require that you give the control of your life to Jesus. But many want to be in control of their own life. Look at this man that Jesus loved. Did you know that what Jesus gave this man as condition is the same thing he gave the disciples that were following him? God is not partial. It was the same condition. One man was able to follow that condition. Another man couldn't follow it. Now, look at what 
in Mark 10:22, he says, And when and he was sad at the same, and went away grieved, for he had great possession. In verse 22 of Matthew 19, he says, But when the young man had that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Brethren, I want you to note something. This is a man who ran to Jesus, who knelt down to Jesus, who acknowledged Jesus as Lord, who asked an important question, who understood also his own limitations, that he didn't have eternal life. That same man, when Jesus now told him what is required, he went away sorrowful. So all along, all along, he was truly not ready to follow the Lord. So you see a lot of people in the church today with zeal. You see a lot of people, they are doing as if they are following Jesus, and yet they are not. Because the most crucial matter, they are not ready to do it. They are ready to keep some commandment here and there. They are ready to even do charity works here and there. But the issue of denying self, the issue of giving the control of their life to Jesus, they are not interested in that. They are not prepared for that. That's not what they want. And Jesus is saying, see, this is the only way to eternal life. Eternal life is to follow me. He is not to do some sect of activities. Keeping the law will not give you eternal life. This man didn't fornicate, he didn't commit adultery. Some are even still, some, some so-called believers in the church are still struggling with the sin that this man said. He wasn't struggling with them. This is a man that, take, that took good care of his own parents. Because he told, because when Jesus said, honor thy father and thy mother, he said, I have kept this. In fact, Jesus said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you see somebody loving his neighbor as himself, you will think that this person is on the journey to eternity. You will think that this one is following Jesus. May I say to you, men can do a lot of things, including keeping the laws of God. But there is something most men don't like, which is that they give up the control of their life to Jesus. There are many things they still love. There are many possessions. Look at what the Bible says. He said he was grieved for he had great possessions. Some of you are afraid you don't want to give up your worldly music. The, the worldly way you have been dressing, you feel that if you commit to Jesus, you will have to give it up, so you don't want it. The decisions you have been making about your life, about your money, you don't want it. Some of you, you know that when you yield completely to Jesus, you will have to submit your resources to your spouse, but you don't want that. You want to be in control of your life. Let me say to you, let me say to you very frankly, you can't follow Jesus. You, there is no partiality. That's the same condition he gave everybody. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him pick up his cross and follow me. The disciple embraced that condition. This man refused that condition. That is why it looks as if God is not working in somebody's life. Now look at all the activities in the life of this man. Yet it was emptiness. He was keeping the law. He was taking care of his parent. He was running after Jesus. He was worshipping Jesus. When they say let's sing, he's quick to raise up his hand and enter the spirit. But he can still not deny self, give up himself and follow Jesus. This man is still not ready to embrace the cross of Jesus. Did you notice, brethren, that Jesus didn't beg him? Did you notice Jesus couldn't help him? Did you see that? Jesus didn't, he couldn't help him. Jesus loved him, but he couldn't help him. Many people are going about, oh, Jesus loves me. Oh, Jesus loves me. Oh, Jesus loves me. The love of Jesus, let me say to you, and I hope you will understand the way I want to put it. It may sound somehow, but I want to still put it that way. The love of Jesus, as great as, as, great as it is, is not sufficient to save you if you are not ready to follow Jesus. The Bible says Jesus loved him. He loved him. If you, you will see that in Mark chapter 10 verse 21. Then Jesus beholding him loved him. He loved him. But he could not save him. This man. Look at, look at, this, look at this terrible statement. The Bible says he went away. Do you know what he was going away from? 
he was going away from Jesus. He was going away from salvation. You know, the, let's try to even picture it. A big rich man. He has many people feeding on his table. He, he, was, he was a good man. He helps people. He gives charity. He gives harm. He doesn't lack. He's in control of his finances. He, he has seen what it means to be poor. He has seen what it means to be a beggar. He knows that when he needs a car, he can just take money in his account and buy a car. Now he has now encountered Jesus. And Jesus is saying, go and give up all of these things. And just come and follow me. Now suddenly, this man will now sell everything. And then he will start following Jesus. He doesn't know where his next meal was going to come from. It was easy for him to do charity the other time. Because he knows that he has enough to also eat. So he could do charity. It was enjoyable to him to take care of his parents. In fact, he would pride himself in it. That, oh, I take good care of my parents. But he will not be following Peter and John. People who didn't go to the same school, who didn't even go to school, he will not be following them. He doesn't know where he's going to sleep. That is how it is when you are following Jesus. Because you are no longer in control of your life, you cannot tell where you are going or what will become of tomorrow. This man is not prepared for that. Many people are not ready to give up on worldliness. You love what you love this world. You can't follow Jesus if you love the world. You must deny self. You see, deny self include, include the works of the flesh, include the love of this world and the kingdom of Satan. Because once you decide to follow Jesus, you will be translated into his own kingdom. Colossians 1.13 it says that we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated to the kingdom of his dear son. So please note this very well, brethren. Jesus loved this man, but Jesus couldn't save him. So stop parading yourself with the love of God. Stop quoting John 3.16. Even John 3.16, do you know what he said? He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish. Should not perish. He didn't say shall not perish. He said should not perish. So the intention of God is that he loves, he had given his son. If you are ready to embrace him, to accept him, then you will not perish. But you are free to reject it. So many people are just laying claim to the love of Jesus, but they are not ready to obey Jesus. Oh, they say he loves them so much. Oh, there is no mountain he won't climb to come for them. There is no wall he will not tear to come for them. There is no sea he will not cross to, to come for them. That is true. But when he comes for you, he's going to tell you the condition to follow him. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me. That was what Jesus was telling this man. But many people are too rich in many things. Some of you, you are rich in anger. You don't want to give it up. Uh, you are rich in malice. In backbiting. Something says to you that if you follow this Jesus, life is going to be boring. Is it not better to be boring with Jesus than to be burning in hell? Which one is better? But I can tell you, following God can, is not even boring. It's because you are not yet following him. Did you know that this was the last time we heard of this man? But the disciple that embraced the same condition he could not embrace. They are the one we are still reading about today. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to save you. But are you ready to follow him? That is our problem today. So many people have gathered preacher unto themselves. So the preacher will come and tell you that this is your season of uplifting and you are happy, you are excited. What uplifting do you think you will have if you have not denied self, pick up your cross? But you love to listen to those kind of messages. You love all of those lies. That's what you want to hear. What is crucial is that you follow Jesus. Is that you deny self. Many of you are in churches celebrating men of God, but you are fornicating. You are into adultery. Even the one, this man that was not committing adultery, you can see that he still could not make it. How much more you? The Bible says no unrighteous person will enter the kingdom of God. He said do not be deceived. Neither fornicator. Neither fornicators. You are, you are still telling lies. You are still living in sin. 
Many of you are into boyfriend girlfriend relationship, and yet you will post all kind of things on your status. You are ready to defend your man of God. Once you are in any relationship, you are going from one hotel to another, engaging in sexual sins, and then you will be on social media defending your man of God, fighting for your man of God. How long will you continue to deceive yourself? You are only deceiving yourself. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you might deny yourself. You cannot enjoy the world and want to enjoy Jesus. You must choose one. The scripture says concerning Moses uh, in, in Hebrews that he chose to rather suffer affliction with the children of Israel than to enjoy the riches or the pleasures of sin in Egypt for a while. That's what we, that's what we read about um, Moses in Hebrews Hebrews chapter 11. Yes, Hebrews chapter 11. He says, let me read it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. He says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the, sons of, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Do you know what that means? Do you see what he's denying? Do you see what he was giving up? He was giving up his right to the throne. He was ready to give up his right to the throne and he gave that up. He said, choosing rather, verse 25 of Hebrews 11, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He preferred to suffer. Many of you don't want to suffer. You have gathered unto yourself preachers who are telling you that you will not suffer. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall be glorified with him. It said they that we live righteous in this world, they will suffer persecution. But you are not prepared. So you have gathered to yourself preachers who are telling you every day, you are going to make it. It's your time of uplifting. It's your time of divine elevation, divine speed, divine this, divine that. Can't you see all these years that these things, they are leading you to nowhere. You think it's about money? You think it's, it's, a, it's about visa? You are living in sin. They are praying for you to get visa. They are only speeding up your destruction. When will you repent and turn to Jesus? He's calling on you today. He's available today again. He's standing again. He says, I want to address the issue of your eternity. If you have not settled the issue of your eternity, you have not settled anything in life. If eternity is not settled, then you are not settled. Look at Moses. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, verse 26 of Hebrews 11. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Look at his own value system. Look at what he's valuing. He said he preferred the reproach of Christ than the riches of, of, of this world. Some of you, you prefer the riches of this world than the reproach of Christ. Many of you are ashamed of Christ. You are ashamed of Jesus. You are, that's why many of you can't share the message of Christ. The only thing you can share are the prayer meetings of your, of your man of God. So that people can join. Because they are telling you, as you are sharing it, you are being blessed. As you are sharing it, you are being blessed. And that's what you are doing. That same you cannot share anything about Jesus. You are worshipping a man. You think you are following Jesus. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Moses was looking at the end goal. He wasn't looking at now. Many of you are living for now. All you care about is now. I want to get visa. I want to get this. I want to get it. That's why you are being deceived. Because your Christianity is get this Christianity. Get that Christianity. It is a getting, getting, getting Christianity you are practicing. And so the devil has also raised men of God for you to deceive you. Men of God in quote to deceive you, promising you that they have a solution to everything you want to get. They, they know how you can get everything you want to get. That's why one false preacher was saying the other day, he said, if, even if 10 men of God pray for you and you did not give them any seed as point of contact, your situation will remain the same. Who told you, where is it written in the Bible that I need men of God to pray for me? Is that is not Christianity. The New Testament work with God, every child of God has access to God. That's not the work of a man of God. It's not his work to open any way for me. It's not the work. But many people are listening to him. That's what you want to hear. Where suddenly does prayer become putting money in the hand of a man 
so that God can answer you. Such men are thieves on our pulpit. But you love them. That, those are the kind of people many are listening to today. Because you are not prepared to suffer for the name of Jesus. May I say to you, if you cannot suffer for Jesus, you cannot reign with Jesus. The earlier you settle this matter, now the better. Moses was looking at the reward. The Bible said, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. I pray God will open your eyes to see that which is invisible. Because what many people are looking at today in the church are visible things. What many ministries are preaching to you are visible things. But remember this man. Jesus loved him, but he could not save him. And Jesus didn't run after him. Jesus didn't beg him. Brethren, if you are not ready to willingly embrace the cross of Jesus, there is nothing God can do for you. Quote me anywhere. If you are not ready to give up on this your sinful nature and embrace the nature of God ha, and follow Jesus, you are going nowhere. You are just wasting your time. You can claim all that you want to claim. You can profess all the nonsense you think you can profess. If you will not deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow Jesus, you are going nowhere. Ordinary worldly music, some of you are holding tightly to it. You feel that it is too much to give up for Jesus. It's because you don't have understanding. It's because you don't see the invisible. You can't enjoy, you, you will not understand what good music is until you are in Christ. Making melody in your heart unto the Lord. The best song you can sing is a song that God is the only audience for that song. <laughs> Imagine that you are singing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When will you give up? Jesus has paid this price on the cross. He has paid the price. He's just asking you to repent and come and embrace him and come and follow him. He told his disciples, follow me and I will make you. Follow me. Are you following Jesus or you are following your denomination? Or you are following your men of God? Or you are following traditions of men? Or you are following yourself? Some of you are doing Christianity on your own terms. This is how me, I want to follow Jesus. You can't say this is how you want to follow Jesus. There is a prescribed way in the scriptures. Are you a disciple of Christ? Can we see on you the mark of Jesus? Brethren, don't take this word for granted. God may have brought this word to you today for a reason. God may be calling on you today saying, I'm going to show you mercy. What you are hearing is the mercy of God upon your life so that you do not perish. It is because Jesus loves you so much that he is sending this word to your life. I just pray with you that with humbleness of heart today, you will repent. And like Moses, you will choose rather to suffer affliction with Christ than to enjoy the temporary riches and sin of this wicked world. I pray that God will open your eyes. That today we begin a, a walk with God in your life. As from today you will begin to experience the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You will begin to experience an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. A consistent walk with him. In the mighty name of Jesus. My name once again is Olu Shegun Mokuolu. And we have brought this message to you from the Living Throne Ministry. If you need clarifications, counseling, or you just want to contact us, our email address is livingthroneministry at gmail.com. And our phone number is plus 234-816-234-818, sorry, 615-7852. Let me take that again. Plus 234-818-615-7852. Please feel free to use any of the contact details to reach us. And if you are watching this on our YouTube channel, check the description below. All our social media handles and our contact and everything 
are there. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with the people of God from now unto eternity. Amen. God bless you.